Hey everyone, it's Apostle Michelle Peterson and I have something really, really great for you guys. The Lord is actually having me teach on the life of Jesus and how Jesus actually lived. And so the next few videos will be about the Lord's life, the Lord Jesus' life, and how he lived his relationship with God. So stay tuned. Okay, you guys, so what we're going to talk about today is how did Jesus live? How did Jesus live? What was his focus? Now, this is what um, God the Father actually told me was the Lord Jesus, what his focus was. This is what um, God said. He said, Jesus was focused on pleasing me. Jesus was focused on pleasing me. So Jesus was focused on pleasing the Father. And everything that he did, he was focused on pleasing the Father. So when we look at um, uh, our Lord Jesus' life, we're going to look at how he was focused on pleasing the Father. So in Matthew 3.13, um, this is basically whenever the Lord was coming to John to be uh, baptized. And so I want us to kind of read that and check that out and see. Um, you know, it talks about... Um, then come up Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering and said unto him, Suffer it, suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water and lo the heavens were open unto him and he saw the spirit of god descending like a dove and lighting upon him and lo a voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased okay so you have the lord jesus here first you have john the baptist uh forbidden <laughs> you know, uh, Jesus, you know, from being baptized. And so the Lord has to kind of, you know, tell him, hey, we have to do this because this is the will of God. Um, this is going to fulfill the, the righteousness of the law. We have to do this. This is God's will. And so then uh, John actually let him, you know, he allowed uh, the baptism. And so he baptized the Lord Jesus. Then you have here, after the Lord Jesus went, he came up out of the water then the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, came down and descended upon the Lord Jesus. Then we hear a voice from heaven, which is the Heavenly Father. We hear the Father saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Okay? So the Lord actually told me that the focus of Jesus was pleasing the Father. The focus of Jesus was pleasing God. It was pleasing Him. Then you have Jesus, you know, getting ready, you know, getting ready to go into ministry. You, he, he, he does the right thing. He, you know, he, he, he goes through baptism and John is like trying to stop him. Hey, you know, you're the one that needs to baptize me, you know, but Jesus is like, no, we're going to go ahead and do this. So Jesus humbled himself, even though, you know, Jesus is the one that baptizes us. He's going to be the one that baptizes us um, with the Holy uh, Spirit. And but he humbled himself, and and he, um, you know, was baptized by John because he wanted to do everything the right way by God. He wanted to fulfill um, all righteousness, you know, and do God's will the right way. So he was baptized, and then you have the Father saying. This is my son, my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. So Jesus was focused on pleasing the Father. And in return, you hear the Father saying, I am well pleased with him. This is my son. This is my beloved son. I am pleased with him. And it says here, the Lord said, I am well pleased with him. The Lord said this was uh, Jesus' focus was to please him. Okay, so then when we go over to Matthew 4, and um, this is where we go into Jesus getting ready to go get started into ministry. But before he gets started into ministry, he is led into the 
the wilderness, um, you know, uh, to be tempted of the devil because he has to go through these things. He has to face the enemy. He has to face him and he has to uh, overcome him basically before he goes into ministry. Okay, so you have in um, Matthew 4, uh, we're going to go through 1 through 11 and I'm just going to kind of talk about each one. And some of the things that the Lord has told me about this. But the Lord said that, um, uh, you know, because we all have areas that, you know, we can experience temptation in. Um, the Lord said the area, this area that Jesus was uh, being tempted in. Now, this is what the enemy was going to tempt Jesus in. Um, this is what the Lord said. The enemy was going to tempt the Lord Jesus to dishonor God, to not trust God, and to not believe God's truth. God's truth, God's words. So the enemy was going to try to uh, tempt him to make him dishonor God, to doubt God, to not believe in God, and not trust God. That was the purpose of the enemy tempting Jesus. So let's read down and see. Um, you know, we already know he wasn't able to to, to overcome Jesus. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and um, see what he said, what he was trying to do. So in Matthew four one, it says, "Then Jesus." led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was after a hungered and when the tempter came to him now this is something you know i want you guys to <laughs> check out when the tempter came to him he said if thou be the son of god command these stones to be made bread now I'll tell you guys something that the Lord told me, um, uh, like how the enemy comes to us, especially um, with fear. The enemy will use the word if. Like when you know the enemy is talking to you, if you're hearing if, what if, what if, you know, God doesn't come through for you this month? What if something bad happens to your kids? What if an accident happens? If you're hearing that what if, if that if is in there, that if is to cause you to doubt something. Doubt. That's what that if does. So look here, he's using that if on the Lord Jesus. So he says, and when, um, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. So he's using that doubt on Jesus. And what does doubt do? Whenever the enemy uses what if this plane crashes? What if your husband cheats on you? What if your wife is, you know, uh, not happy? What if, what, when the enemy uses that if, what if, what does that get you to do? It gets you to think on that. And then you start thinking, well, what if this plane crashed? What if something bad happens to my kids when they're in college? What you start really thinking about it, and it causes you to doubt okay it causes you to doubt and so what doubt does it takes away truth it takes away your faith in God or in the situation you know what I mean it changes the truth around okay and so this is what he does to the Lord Jesus so he's trying to get him to doubt God doubt who God said he was he's trying to get him to not believe or prove that you are the son of God you got to prove to me you're the son of God you know, even though, you, you know, I know Jesus is saying, I already know I'm the son of God. The enemy is saying, you have to prove to me that you're the son of God. If you are the son of God, do this. If you are the son of God, do this. Okay, so this is what the enemy was trying to do. The enemy was trying to get the Lord Jesus to obey him by getting him to doubt, getting him to feel like he had to prove that he was the son of God. But... I mean, this is, this is what he was doing, trying to get Jesus to obey his words, okay? Command these stones to be bred. That's him telling him what to do. He's telling him to command these stones. He's telling him to do it. <laughs> now, check out what the Lord Jesus says. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every, every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Okay, so um, the enemy's trying to get him to doubt he's the son of God. 
by saying, if you are the Son of God, do this. And so the Lord Jesus says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So this is the cool thing that the Lord revealed to me about this. Okay, you guys, so whenever the enemy was trying to um, make the Lord Jesus doubt that he was the Son of God, he was trying to um, make the Lord Jesus doubt God also, and also he was trying to command you know, he was trying to tell the Lord Jesus what to do. He was telling him to command the stones to be made bread. Okay? So he's trying to get uh, the Lord Jesus to obey him. If the enemy tells you to do something and you do it, you know, you're obeying the enemy. You know what I mean? So here the Lord Jesus is saying, um, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So if God is telling you to do something, God is speaking, or if you have the words of God, you have the Bible, and you're obeying the words of God, then you're being obedient to God, not the enemy. So if the enemy says, command these stones to be made bread, and you obey him, you obey the enemy. Those are the enemy's words. He's telling you to do that. But the words of God, all the words that proceed out of the mouth of God, if you obey those words, God's words, and then you are living um, and being obedient to God's words. So, you know, the enemy was trying to tell Jesus to do something, to command the stones to be made bread. But Jesus came back and said, look, I don't live by your words. I live by God's words and every word that proceeded out of God's um, mouth. That's what I'm going to do. So he was telling the enemy, I'm not going to, I'm not going to obey you. I'm going to obey God's words. So Jesus was obedient to the words of God, the laws of God, the commandments of God, and he wanted to do God's will and please God. Okay, so then the enemy comes back, you know, to the Lord Jesus. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and sitteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, if, he's using if again, he's trying to bring that doubt in there, if thou be the Son of God. But see see how he's doing it. He's trying to get Jesus to prove himself. You know, prove who he is. Like he doesn't really know who he is, so he got to prove it. Like if anyone uh, starts attacking you saying, you know, you're not a Christian, you're this. You know, you know, if you're a Christian, you shouldn't be living this way or whatever. They're trying to get you to um, doubt that you're a Christian. So now you got to try to prove yourself. You got to try to prove you're a Christian. And some things, if you just are, you don't have to prove it. Like me, when I look in the mirror, I'm African American, I'm black. So if someone tells me, oh, you don't sound black, you don't act black. I've had people actually say that to me. You don't act black, you don't sound black, you don't talk black. And I'm like, well, you know, what does a black person supposed to act like or talk? But because I am black, I don't have to try to prove to them that I am black. Because I'm already black. It doesn't matter if I act like, you know, what they think I should act like to be a black person or what. I just am. When you just are, that's the truth. You just are. You don't have to prove that you are. You just are. Okay? <laughs> like with God, he said, I am that I am. He doesn't have to try to prove that he, he's, he is. He just is. So here, the enemy is trying to get the Lord Jesus to try to prove who he is. He doesn't have to prove who he is. He just is. But the Lord Jesus knows this. So the enemy's taking him up. Um, in Matthew 4, 6, he says, And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. See, he's telling him what to do. He's telling him to do this. He's telling him to cast himself down. So if Jesus was to do it, he would be obeying the, the devil, basically. So he's telling him what to do. Cast thyself down. Now, see, he's getting smart. He sees, you know, um, above, he sees uh, in verse 4 that Jesus only obeys the word of God. He, he lives by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That's what Jesus lives by, the words of God. So the enemy gets a little smarter in this one. He comes and he says, If thy be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. So he's using the scriptures to try to put in with his, like the enemy's trying to get the Lord Jesus to cast himself down. But he's adding scriptures also because he knows the Lord Jesus 
only obeys scriptures. You know, if scriptures, you know, if it's not in the word, he's not going to obey it. So the enemy, you know, is using scriptures to try to see if he can get Jesus to obey that. And Jesus is still not <laughs> falling for it. So Jesus says, next, Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord God. Okay. So Jesus is showing, you know, showing him, I have the utmost honor and respect for my father. I am not going to be tempted. You know, I am not going to tempt God. I am not going to bow down to you. I am not going to just, you know, do these things. You know, just because you're telling me to do it and I'm going to tempt God and, and, and have God, you know, sending the angels to, to make sure, you know, my feet don't get hurt because you're telling me to do this. No, I'm not going to tempt God like that. Then when you go here, the next one, the enemy still, still is trying the Lord Jesus. Okay. It says, again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him all these things will I give thee if he's still using that word if if thou wilt fall down and worship me so the enemy is going straight totally trying to get um, the Lord Jesus to totally dishonor God. And I'll tell you what the, uh, the Lord said that the enemy's plan when he said this. He said his mind was to turn my son against me and receive worship for himself. So the enemy, by doing this, he was trying to turn Jesus against the Father and also receive worship for his, himself. The enemy wants to be worshipped. He wants to turn us against God and have us worship him instead. You know, that's totally sad. But he was trying to get the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, to do the same thing. The same thing that he's trying to get with me and you, you know, to get us to turn against God, to sin and obey him, and then worship him. You know, he's trying to do the same thing with us too. He tried this with the Lord Jesus, it didn't work. So when he's trying to get the Lord Jesus to dis totally dishonor God, to be turned against God, and to worship Him. This is what the Lord Jesus says to him. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and Him only shall thou serve. You guys, I could just feel the Lord Jesus here, like, just using, you know, like, just, like, who do you think you are, you know? And then, you know, just, you know, how, who do you think you are to even think that, you know, there's only one that deserves worship. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. I like that. And then so the enemy, you know, he was like probably mad and upset. Then the devil leaveth him. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. And right after this, this is when the Lord Jesus, his ministry started. He was tempted of the enemy. The enemy tried to get him to go against God, tried to get him to bow down and worship him, tried to get him to obey, tried to get Jesus to obey him. He tried to do all of these things to turn Jesus against God and to get him to doubt God, doubt who he was dishonor God, um, to not trust God or believe God's word, to believe, to believe God's truth. But Jesus still, he had the truth inside of him. He knew God's word. He knew God's will. You know, he had a personal close relationship with God. And Jesus was able to counter every um, temptation that the enemy threw at him. He was able to counter everything with the words of God. And everything that Jesus spoke had to do with God. It had to do with God and his words. He said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That is being obedient to God, God's words. Then the next, he said, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. That is God's, that's, you know, that's uh, the word of God. So he's talking about God. Then he says, 
thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. So he's letting him know, you cannot take away my relationship with my father. You know, and and I am one with my father. I walk with my father. You know, my my will is to please the father. And so he's letting the enemy know that it's all about the father. It's, you know, it's nobody else is important enough um, than the father. And so I love this because this is the Lord's heart. The Lord Jesus, his focus, this is what God said. God the Father said, Jesus' focus was on pleasing him. That's what he said. And we see here that Jesus actually did please the Father because the Father said, I am well pleased with him. And this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So Jesus did accomplish that. And so what I want to do, I just want to go through some of the... Um, uh, some of the um, the scriptures and we're going to look at the Lord Jesus' life and see how uh, he walked with God and how he pleased God and the, the things that he actually did, uh, the way he lived. So this is the first one that, um, you know, I'm just kind of going through uh, the Bible. And so, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. The Lord wanted me to teach this. And um, I guess I will see you guys in the next video that we will uh, do about uh, how Jesus actually lived and focusing on the Lord Jesus' life. So, all right, God bless.